Hey folks, how's it going? In this video we're going to go over conservation of angular momentum. So let's get started. So the first thing to point out is that at higher level you came across the principle of conservation of linear momentum, also known as the law of conservation of linear momentum, which states that the total momentum before an interaction is equal to the total momentum after an interaction provided there are no external forces acting on the objects. We're now going to put an angular spin on this and talk about it in terms of conservation of angular momentum. So similarly, there exists the principle of conservation of angular momentum which states that the total angular momentum before an interaction is equal to the total angular momentum after the interaction provided there are no external torques acting on the objects. So notice the similarities between these two principles or two laws and you'll notice that there's only very slight differences. So we're saying angular momentum here instead of linear momentum and we're saying no external torques instead of no external forces. So remember torque is almost like the angular form of force. Now at this point it's probably worth reminding you about the expression that we could come up with from this definition in the higher physics course which said that m1u1 plus m2u2 equals m1v1 plus m2v2. So that was the total momentum before is equal to the total momentum after. We can now do a similar thing and come up with an expression for the principle of conservation of angular momentum in terms of symbols. So if we look at that it says this can be written in symbol form as i1 omega naught 1 plus i2 omega naught 2 is equal to i1 omega 1 plus i2 omega 2. This looks kind of complicated but let's break it down into what they mean. So it says here 1 and 2 identifies the two interacting objects. So there's my first object, there's my second object and that is my before motion and then there's my first object and my second object and that is my after motion. So the symbols have their usual meanings. So I1 and I2, those are my moments of inertia of my object 1 and object 2 respectively. Omega naught 1 and omega naught 2, that is my initial angular velocities of my first and second object respectively. And then omega 1 and omega 2 are my final angular velocities of my first and second object respectively. So it probably just looks a bit more complex than what it actually is. Then says, note, just as in a linear momentum question, decrease the the mass increases the velocity. So remember at higher level when we said that total momentum before must equal total momentum after, this meant that if we decreased the mass in a specific case then we had to increase the velocity to keep the linear momentum the same because otherwise it would change since p equals mv. So it's the same for angular motion and so it says in an angular momentum question decreasing the moment of inertia increases the angular velocity. So just in the same way remember moment of inertia is like the angular form of mass and angular velocity is obviously the angular form of linear velocity. So if moment of inertia decreases in a certain situation and we want to keep angular momentum the same, then we must increase angular velocity. To put this into context, let's look at a specific example for an ice skater, the spinning ice skater. And it says, consider an ice skater who is spinning around a point as shown below. So initially his arms are extended. To visualise a scenario similar to the spinning ice skater, imagine you've got a person sitting on some kind of rotating stool or some kind of swingy chair and they're holding their arms out whilst rotating and they're holding two masses in their hands. You've probably all experienced the effect of what will happen when you bring your arms in towards your body in this case and in actual fact you should appear to go faster so let me just show you that. So if their arms are extended to begin with, they're rotating slowly and if they bring their arms in towards their body, they start rotating faster. But why is that? Well, it's all to do with moment of inertia and conservation of angular momentum. So let's break down why this happens in our example of the spinning ice skater. So the skater will have a certain angular momentum with his arms extended. If he pulls his arms in towards his body, his angular momentum must remain constant. So the total angular momentum before must equal total angular momentum after. So we're talking about arms extended versus arms in towards his body. However, his moment of inertia will have decreased since i is proportional to r squared. Because remember, r is the distance of the mass distribution from the axis of rotation. So if we decrease r by bringing the arms in towards the body, then you have more mass now located around the axis of rotation. And it means that your moment of inertia has decreased. Decreased. So if moment of inertia has decreased, as a consequence, his angular velocity omega must increase to compensate and he therefore spins faster. You can also achieve the same effect by moving from the edge of a spinning children's roundabout to the centre Go and try it if you want a bit of fun. Hopefully if you're an advanced higher physics pupil you've grown out of the stage of playing on children's roundabouts but if you want to fill your boots and try out some real life physics then go for it. You probably remember how scary it is to be in the centre of one of those roundabouts where everything feels much faster compared to if you're out on the edge of the roundabout and that's because your angular velocity has increased because your moment of inertia has decreased as you've gone towards the centre of that roundabout. That's all for this video folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.